Got another bunch of questions for the alkanes and haloalkanes topic, and as always, the link to the questions is in the description of the video. I'm going to try them first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So, which of the following property explains the low reactivity of alkanes? Well, it's down to C, the high CC bond enthalpy. Moving on to the next question. So, first thing I'm going to do is calculate how many moles of 2 bromobutane we used in the reaction. So, mass over MR, 0.177. If you look at the ratio, you'd expect to make that many moles of the alcohol product. So the next thing we need to do is work out how many moles of alcohol were actually formed. So that's another mass over MR, and we get 0.065. So we expected to make that many moles, but we only made that many moles. So the percentage yield is the actual over the expected multiplied by 100 which comes out at 36.7%, so the answer was C. Uh, moving on to the last of the multiple choice questions. I think this is pretty tricky, this one, actually. So hopefully you can see what I've done there. I've just come up with a generic equation for the combustion of a hydrocarbon, and for every mole of carbon in the uh, hydrocarbon, you get the same number of moles of CO2. That's all we're really interested in here. We also know that we had a gram of hydrocarbon, and we've made 3.38 grams of CO2. So the first thing I'm going to do is work out how many moles of carbon dioxide that is. So that's just another mass over MR calculation, 0.0768 moles of CO2. Remember what I said a minute ago, so for every mole of carbon in the hydrocarbon, you get that many moles of CO2. So that means that there's 0.0768 moles of carbon in this. So the next thing we'll do is turn these moles into grams, so we can find the mass of carbon in CXHY. So that comes out at 0.922 grams, and we know the whole thing weighs a gram, so the difference between these two numbers is the mass of hydrogen. So now we know the mass of each atom in the hydrocarbon, we can work out the moles. Well, we already knew that the moles of carbon was 0.0768, and obviously the moles of hydrogen is its mass divided by one, which is there or thereabouts the same. So that's telling us that the ratio between carbon to hydrogen must be one to one, and therefore the answer was A. So very well done if you got that one right, because I think that's tricky. Moving on to the sort of main questions now. So we've got to work out um, the atom economy for the preparation of alcohol A. So there's just a reminder of the formula we use. So percentage atom economy is the MR of the desired product divided by the MR of all the products, or you could divide by the MR of all the reactants, if you prefer, because it's the same, and multiply that by 100. So we'll just put the numbers in. So we're getting an atom economy of 46.1%. Moving on to the mechanism now for the alkaline hydrolysis of this halogenoalkane. So obviously it's going to be hydrolyzed by hydroxide ions. So we need to put a dipole across the carbon halogen bond, which is that way around. We take a curly arrow from that lone pair to the carbon and we break the CBR bond by heterolytic fission. So there's the organic product and don't forget that that bromine is going to come off as a bromide ion. So don't forget about that. Moving on to the name of the mechanism, so the hydroxide ion is acting as a nucleophile, so it's donating a pair of electrons to the carbon, and essentially the hydroxyl group is going to replace the bromine, so it's nucleophilic substitution. And moving on to the final part of this question, so the student decides to prepare alcohol A, but they're using a chloroalkane instead of a bromoalkane, State and explain how the rates of hydrolysis differ. So the rate of hydrolysis is all dependent on the strength of the carbon halogen bond in the haloalkane. So we've got a CCL bond in this one, the chloroalkane. We've got a CBr bond in the bromoalkane. Well, the CCL bond is stronger. It's got a higher bond enthalpy than CBr, so it doesn't break as easily. So the rate for this one will be slower.
Moving on to the next question. So we've got to give the systematic name for this halogen or alkane. So longest continuous chain is one, two, three, four long. So it's a butane. We've got a bromine on carbon two. If we count from this side, we get a two for that. So it's going to be a two bromo, three, three dimethyl butane. On to part B. So the definition for stereoisomers Molecules with the same structural formula, but different spatial arrangement of atoms or groups. So what type of stereoisomerism is this going to show? So the answer is optical, and that's because this haloalkane has a chiral centre. It's that one I've highlighted there. So we've got four different groups attached to that carbon. We've got a methyl, we've got a bromine, we've got a hydrogen, and we've got this group here. These three methyl groups from this carbon. Moving on to the 3D diagrams for the stereoisomers, it's obviously based on a tetrahedral structure because you've got four bonds coming off this chiral centre. So we've got an empty tetrahedron and I'm just going to put the groups on the left hand one. Now, it doesn't matter which way around you do the group, so at the top here I'm going to put this carbon with the three methyl groups attached. And then I'm going to put the hydrogen there, put the bromine there and that means I need to put a methyl group here. So for the mirror image, all I need to do now is just put the groups on in the correct bonds. So the top here, I've got that three methyls on the carbon. On the dotted line, I've got a CH3. Just be careful with your connectivity. I've got the bromine on the wedge. I've got the hydrogen on the solid line. Moving on to the mechanism, so we've got to come up with the initiation reaction and the propagation steps to form this haloalkane here. So initiation is where the bromine molecule has its bond broken by homolytic fission and it produces two bromine radicals. So the first propagation step, the bromine radical that we've just produced, that's going to take a hydrogen but it's going to take the hydrogen from this carbon here, carbon number two, because that's where the bromine is actually going to attach itself um, later on in the mechanism. So I always get the students to write the hydrogen halide first so they don't forget about it. And that means that the radical that's produced needs to look like that. So the dot needs to go on this carbon here. Second propagation step, we take that new radical, we react it with a bromine molecule, we're going to get that haloalkane there, so there it is there, and we're going to reform the bromine radical. So in terms of limitations, we've got to come up with two. Well, there's three things you could say. So the first thing I've gone for is you could substitute bromine anywhere on the carbon chain. Now, it wasn't required for this question, but I always encourage my students to come up with an example just to qualify, just to back up what you're saying. So instead of having the bromine substituting at carbon 2, there's an example of what else could form. So you could have the bromine substituting at carbon 1. Another thing that could happen is if the bromine was in excess, you could get multiple substitutions occurring. So you could get a dibromo or a tribromo alkane formed instead. So again, it wasn't required for this question, but there's an example of a dibromo um, product that could form. So there's two limitations, so we've answered the question, but let's talk about another thing that could happen. So in the termination step that comes after propagation, there's actually more than one termination step. So there's more than one organic product that could form. So again, an example of what could form, if you took two of these radicals here, obviously they'd connect there, like I've done here, and you'd create this very strange looking thing here. 